ladies and gentlemen here i am with yet another review we are going to be talking about the japanese sega saturn that's right the original og the s the hst 0001 model released in 1994 in good old hometown of japan sega saturn represents a leap in the new age of entertainment take a look at the back of the box right here which is all in japanese i wish i could read it if i could don't worry i'm still working on that just fyi do lingo everyone anyway take a look at all these awesome accessories that are not in the box unfortunately but hey it's still awesome to look at it's always nice to look at bosses with such colorful artwork it's very interesting i actually really love the style of this box right here it's all golden and everything Perfectly fitting for a console that really is golden. Okay, well, maybe not literally. I mean, it's gray, but hey, it's still an awesome piece of hardware to play with. So right here is the Japanese Sega Saturn. I mean, from a visual standpoint, it definitely looks better than the uh, American Saturn, which I will jump to in a second. So you can see that the buttons are pretty much exactly the same. Like, it's got the oval buttons right there, except it's all blue. That's the only difference. Uh, and then there's your open button right there and the overall console has like a grayish finish to it and then right there in the back you can see that's your uh, cartridge port pretty much the same things that i'm saying right here is exactly the same as i said in my uh review of the american saturn which if you guys hadn't seen make sure you guys go check out that review so that way things would be more clear here when you watch this particular video so right here you can clearly see the Japanese Sega Saturn right next to the American Sega Saturn Model 1. So yeah, both of them are Model 1s. And both of them are functionally the same, except, you know, one of them plays American games and the other plays Japanese games. However, if you do have this right here, the Action Replay 4 and Plus car, uh, if you have it for your American Saturn specifically, you can actually play import games, which would technically eliminate the use of having a Japanese Sega Saturn around if you have that but it would still be an awesome piece of hardware for your collection if you're an enthusiast such as myself but other than that if you're a casual then stick to the action replay that's the only thing i have to say so you can look at the back of both systems like i said everything i said in my previous review are exactly the same like i said it's the japanese saturn is functionally the same in every single way you got those fans right there in the back and then you also see uh, right there, there's their AC outputs right there. And then there's their AV as well as the link cables as well. So as I said before, it's functionally the same. And then you also have the backup battery expansion bay, which for the record, yes, I actually did replace the backup battery in the Japanese Saturn. So it works just fine. I mean, you can easily buy an, a new backup battery like on Amazon for like only two bucks or whatever. So it's not like they're crazy expensive. So they're all behind. So right here you have the uh, Japanese Sega Saturn controller, which is, you know, for the Model 1, it's actually kind of interesting that it has this one because in America, there were two different versions. Now right here is the American uh, Model 2 uh, Sega Saturn controller, which is the same as the Model 1 Japanese controller, except, you know, it's just black. And in case you're wondering... Uh, the American controllers actually do work on the Japanese Saturn, so you don't have to worry about any American Sega Saturn accessories being region locked. They all they all work functionally, and and I have personally tested them out. Uh, and even uh, the Japanese controller on my American Saturn, and they all work just fine. So you don't have to worry about stuff like region lock or anything like that, unless it's for a game, of course. But that's about it. Now, one thing that I think I did already bring up in my previous review was the uh, cartridge slot, but I want to bring up the Japanese Saturn specifically because there's actually a lot more. Right here is the KOF 95 RAM ROM card, and right here is the one megabyte RAM card because there were certain games that came out for the Sega Saturn that actually required the use of these carts right here, and obviously KOF 95 was one of them. It was a ROM card, not a RAM card, but... This is what you would do. All you would do is just put it in the uh, back right there and just slot it in right there. Just like that, as I said in my previous review. Although, I still think it's a bummer how Sega completely blew the opportunity to have ba you know, backwards compatibility right there by using it as a way to play Genesis and 32S games. But hey, you know, life can't always be fair. But that's all I have to say, really. I already said that in my previous review. 
So let's take a look at the collection I have for the Sega Saturn. Right here we have Vampire Hunter, Darkstalker's Revenge, a very, very awesome fighting game. There's actually a crap load of Capcom fighting games for the Sega Saturn. And the Sega Saturn is known for being an awesome 2D powerhouse. So a lot of 2D fighting games play a lot better on here than, than its competitor. So here we have Vampire Savior, which is actually regarded as the best Darkstalkers game on uh, the Sega Saturn. And I haven't, I personally haven't played it yet because I'm trying to figure out how to get the copy to work but hey i'm still working on it <laughs> anyway so here we have x-men children of the atom yet another capcom fighting game to jumpstart the capcom marvel games which would then later spawn in the future marvel vs. capcom series one of the most famous fighting game franchises of all time right here we have virtual cop 2 i also happen to own the american copy of the original and i can definitely say that virtual cop 2 is probably better uh, because of the performance, like the performance is actually a lot different. It actually runs a lot more stable than the first game does. Right here we have Saturn Bomberman Fight, which uses the same elements as the older Bomberman games, except it uses its puzzle elements in the form of a fighting game, and it was the first uh, Bomberman game of the series to use 3D model graphics. So there you go, that's another first, and it was on the Sega Saturn, so what do you know? Right here we have... King of Fighters 95. I already mentioned that it come that it came with the ROM card when I bought it on eBay. And then right here we have King of Fighters 96, which requires the one megabyte RAM card. That's the only difference. So King of Fighters 95 is the only one to use a completely different uh card compared to the other games. Although there were I think there were other games that used specific ROM cards, but I don't remember for sure. I think KOF 95 was the only one. Right here we have one of the rarest games of all time, Radiant Silver Gun. Yes, I'm pretty sure people are going to spam in the comments, how did I get that? Trust me, it was not easy trying to acquire this game. It cost me over 200 bucks, but A, it was still worth it. And speaking of treasure games, Here's another classic, Guardian Heroes. This is without a doubt one of the greatest games on the Sega Saturn. And you don't and it's and the best part about it is, is that the majority of the games I own are import friendly, so you don't have to worry about like following the story in order to play them. Guardian Heroes, you just run around and you just beat the crap out of people. That's all there is to it. Now, right here we have one of my favorite fighting games on the Saturn, Fighting Vipers. I previously reviewed the American version on this show, but I never talked about the Japanese version. The only difference between this and the, uh, and the American version is that the Japanese version features Pepsi Man as a hidden character, which is interesting. And speaking of Sega 3D Fighters, what about Fighters Mega Mix, another game that I previously reviewed on my channel? I, my opinions are pretty much the same. It's one of the greatest video game uh, crossover, crossovers ever, and it predates Tekken Tag Tournament, so there you go. Here's another game right here, a game that was donated personally to the show by my good friend Nightbound92, The House of the Dead, the original. Even though it's ridiculed for not for having subpar graphics and a slower frame rate compared to the arcade, I still think it's really fun specifically for the home port uh, of, the, uh, of the game. That's really all there is to it. And right here is my favorite 3D fighting game on the Saturn, Dead or Alive, the original. I mean, there's only one word to describe this game. Titties. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's that's it, really. Just that. Anyway, so, speaking of more fighting games, here's another Capcom one. The Street Fighter Collection, which was also available on the PlayStation. But the Saturn version, from what I understand, is actually received better because it uh, had a better performance. I mean, as I said before, the Sega Saturn is known... For uh, playing 2D games very, very well compared to its competitor, the PlayStation 1. So you can see why. It's still not a definitive version, but hey, it still works. Right here is Gale Racer, a very average racing game to say the least, but it actually is uh, pretty fun if you don't mind driving long miles. But I mean, I can warn you, it's very rage inducing because you'll probably crash all the time. But hey, it's still pretty fun in some sense. Right here we have K1 Fighting Illusion, which is an MMA fighting game. It's actually very clunky, to be honest with you. But it's still an interesting pickup for uh, for the Sega Saturn, the Japanese one specifically. And right here is the last one of my collection, Grandia. Now, I will warn you, this game right here is not import-friendly at all. If you do want to play the Saturn version, the only thing you have to do is beat the original game first. Preferably the PS1 version, and then come back to the Saturn version and then play it again once, you, once you're once you familiar with it. So you can see the enormous stack of games for this beast of a system. I honestly can say right now that collecting for the Japanese Saturn is actually more fun than the American version. 
as I said before, if you have the Action Replay Plus card and an American uh, Sega Saturn, then you technically don't need to have the Japanese Sega Saturn in order to play these import games because you can collect these import games as long as you have an Action Replay card because it does play import games, although it does work functionally the same way on your Japanese Saturn, because if you're wondering if it works on the Japanese Saturn, yes, it does, and you can play American games on it. It basically breaks the region lock of each respective system. So that's all there is that I have to say about uh, the Japanese Sega Saturn. My opinion is about it is pretty much the same as the American one, and I do think it's more fun to collect for. So if you guys did enjoy this review, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and I will be back with more reviews. This is your friendly neighborhood reptile signing off.